Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we're going to talk about my personal obsession, sparkly fountain pens, so stick around. This video is going to be all about sparkly fountain pens, and I was kicked off on this journey of wanting to use sparkle fountain pens with this Bennu Euphoria fountain pen that I'm going to be unboxing first for you. After I got this, it set off a chain of events of getting a bunch of different sparkly pens, which you will see also throughout the video. <laughs> I have seen people unbox this particular pen and definitely this brand many, many times over the years on YouTube, and I've just never been pushed to actually get one. There was always something a little bit off about the design. I didn't quite like this. I didn't quite like that, so I never got it. But this particular one always had my eye, and I did end up pulling the trigger and getting this one after I saw it on another YouTuber's channel, and this one is called the Benu Euphoria Vodka on the Rocks. And as you can see, it really does look like, to me, more like a seltzer-based beverage. And maybe that's just because I don't drink, so I don't see <laughs> vodka in this. I see like a sparkling water. I love the blues and the green sparkles. I love that it's just wall-to-wall -wall sparkle. And what happened was I had seen another, I'd seen it a bunch of times and I always thought it was kind of cool and pretty, but I didn't like the really big black cap band. There was always something a little bit off for me where I was like, eh, I don't know, it's not exactly me. But then I saw this YouTuber who had the pink guava version of this Euphoria, and she had unboxed this Vodka on the Rocks in a video saying, I loved that pink guava so much that I ended up getting this second one, which is the Vodka on the Rocks one that I got. And what pushed me over the edge was when she said she noticed when she would write with her Banu Euphoria, her mood would be elevated. Like she actually would feel happier. And that is so on brand for me as a human. Like that is right up my alley. Anything that elevates joy, brings more joy and happiness and smiles around. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it. Because if that is even remotely true, I need this pen in my life. And the first thing I did when I got it, other than take this video and just go gaga over how sparkly and happy it is. It is so sparkly. It is like literal wall-to-wall -wall glitter. I love it. Um, I took it to a cafe and I wrote in my journal with it. And I could not stop looking at the sparkles, because as you write with it and as it moves, it just, because of these facets, it actually has a bunch of facets on it. Every time you move even slightly, a new sparkle shows up. And it did. It made me so happy and joyful. I almost like looked around with a huge smile on my face to see if anyone else was getting a kick out of it. <laughs> and I, I really resisted sparkle pens for so long because I thought, well, I can do a subtle sparkle, like in my Sailor Pro Gear Slim Purple Rain, which has sparkles on the purple body. That was kind of the most blingy sparkle pen I had had until this one. And after I got this one and I loved it so much, I went on a rampage and got a lot of different sparkle pens, which you'll start seeing in this video. This particular one is in a medium nib, and I got it in a medium nib literally so that I could use it for work. And I'm about to unbox the second sparkle pen that you're going to see here. Um, and I did have hesitation because I'm a lawyer and I work as a mediator. And so I thought, well, can I really bring sparkly, happy, over-the-top pens to work? And yes, absolutely. The same way that it elevates my mood and it makes me happier, it actually brings that especially in my role as a mediator, it does tend to bring the emotion back down, which is what you want. You want people to be able to see through their emotions to the actual underlying needs and desires and see how we can meet those instead of just getting focused on an emotional attachment to one particular result. So I do use my fountain pens for art. I use them for journaling. I use them to track what I'm reading with my nonfiction. I have a whole book for my nonfiction journaling where I just write down key phrases, key quotes, key concepts, themes, takeaways, what can I apply to my life? Because I don't know about you, but when I read nonfiction books, um, I, I will tend to forget a lot of them after a while, whereas with fiction books, I can remember a plot the same way I can remember a movie. But with nonfiction books, it's easy for me to be like, oh, I thought that was really good. I got a lot out of it, but I can't quite remember what. So I will write that stuff down. And then I can just go back to my journal and it has a summary of, and, I, and then the whole book comes back to my mind. This one here is called the Candy Nougat. I've been looking at this for so long, especially on Ginger Peachy here. Um, I think it's Ginger Peachy Stationery is her channel here. She's lovely. She has a beautiful pen collection. And she had this Candy Nougat body from Little Pen Designs. 
and I have not seen it on their website since, and I thought I just missed my chance, and I was never going to be able to get this candy nougat body, but I messaged her about it when she posted one of hers on Instagram, and she said, you can just get in touch with him, and he might still have some of the material, and he can make you one. And I did, and he made me this custom version with the purple sparkly end cap and section and a teal sparkle cap, which actually has purple sparkles in it. So it all just goes together so beautifully. I love to stare at this pen. This one is also in a medium nib so that I can specifically use it on somewhat worse paper, but still get the joy out of seeing enough ink come out that it's like not quite a broad, which is my favorite, but definitely not a fine, which is my least favorite. Fine and below, I don't like as much. I have been obsessed with getting sparkle pens <laughs> ever since I got that Banu. I cannot tell you how true it was. And I think, I, I don't want to mess it up. I'll try to put it on the screen, the person whose video I watched. I think it was Mandy, um, who, it, it was either Ink Splat, I don't know. I'm going to put the name on there, who was talking about the Banu lifting her mood. But that theme is throughout all of these pens. I have been ridiculously busy at work lately, and that's actually why I missed my last week's video. And I wasn't even sure if I was going to do a video this week, but I had all this footage and I really have been obsessing and thinking about sparkly, happy fountain pens for months. And I was like, I should just put this out there. I should just start talking about it on the channel and share all this footage instead of leaving it to Instagram. This one here is a Walltown Pens um, it's the Sebastian body. So the blank that they hand turn the pen out of is called the Sebastian blank. And it's the Edgemont model. I'm just showing it here with my pink platinum 3776 niece in Lilas because I think they go so well together. This sparkle pen has been super fun. This one I did get in a broad and it is a super juicy broad. Um, I'm going to give you some writing samples of some of these pens now for a bit while I finish chatting about it. This one is so stinking cute. I saw it show up on my Instagram feed because I subscribed to Walltown there and I immediately went and bought it. So I don't even think it was on the website for 30 seconds before I picked it up because <laughs> I love it so much and I have no regrets. I'm obsessed with it. This one is like the Euphoria makes me so happy. So I've really just, I think because I've been so busy at work, so I when work is like that, I do tend to feel more of a treat yourself mentality. And I do tend to indulge in more of things like this. Like years ago, over 10 years ago, it used to be things like purses that I would get. And I'm glad it's not a purse. It's something like this because I ended up selling so many purses when I moved. And those were literally just like work cope purses. <laughs> Whereas these happy pens are so useful. They bring me joy. I love them. There is definitely a secondary market for them, but I love them and I want to keep them forever and I'm happy that I'm indulging in this sort of obsession. I even did a live stream with my friend Moni D. Major here on YouTube where we did a fountain pen like unboxing and ink unboxing and just spent some time having fun over our <laughs> mutual art supplies and our fountain pen supplies. And we talked on that video a little bit about like getting down the rabbit hole. And I have recently, like with getting so many fountain pens this year already, felt a little bit guilty and felt like, oh, should I even share this? Should I tell my YouTube audience about this? And she and Sketches and Scrubs both, en both encouraged me like, yes, do it. It's what you're going through. It's what you're really doing. It's what you're really into. And it's okay that it's not exactly cute art. It's cute art adjacent. And frankly, it's you. Like, it's me. It's who I am right now. It's what I'm into. And so I just thought I'd share it because if I'm into cute art, and super sparkly cute fountain pens, I thought maybe you might be too. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like, leave a comment with your favorite pen from this video, and check if you're subscribed. If you're not, I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, create something cute.